Okay, well, I think that to begin with, relationships underpin everything we do. Uh, my feeling would be this, is that there's always this dynamic tension between relationship and organisation. And when organisation becomes um, pivot, um, we lose the dynamic, I think we lose the spirit, mm -hmm. I think we lose our purpose and our vision. But when relationships in its proper place and and organisation underpins it, then I think we've got a healthy, a health, not a tension, just a healthy balance. Uh -huh. um, and also, Steve, to tell you the truth, life is relationships, and that's all we've got left. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing you do when you're dying is you, is you tell people you love them, or you have your family around you. You don't actually watch a movie, or go to a sports arena, or ask how your tax is doing. <laughs> <laughs> because at that pivotal, um, significant moment, the thing that matters the most is relationships. Yes. And I think that in church life, we've got to have this dynamic of reconciled to God, but then reconciled to each other. To one another, yes. And I, a lot of the life of Christ to me does not come out of my prayer life. Yeah. It comes out of my together life. Right. So I think relationships are pivotal because they're all we've got. They're what we have with God the Father. And I think if they underpin everything, then we have a sense of health in our movements. Well, look, it's a really big one, this uh, pastoral care. First of all, I think it's got a high value. Mm -hmm. I think that every movement has to have pastoral, natured people in it. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a dynamic with that between a leader and a pastor. Sometimes the pastors of a movement are not necessarily the prime leaders. Mm -hmm. And I think if they can recognise the benefit of each other, mm -hmm. but I think that um, my understanding is that pastors of all people need pastoring. Right. However, the moment you talk like that, that we, we are immediately asking out of the pastors a transparency and accountability. Yes. And it's easy to write, and it's easy to raise your hand or put your hand across your heart and make the royal pledge uh, of those things or to sign a constitution or a policy document. Mm -hmm. But what really pastoring means is that I will mess with your life yes. because I care about your children. Yes. Or I will ask you the questions about where did you go when, you, when your wife was worried? Yeah. Or I will ask the questions about why are you driving a Mercedes when your church is um, barely on, you know, available to, yeah. can, can't even come with a yeah. Yeah. do. So pastoring is not about they're there, that's awesome, yeah. well done. Yeah. I think that's weak. Yes. My understanding is the Apostle Paul has two hands. One was encouragement, the other was rebuke. Yes. And if we only encourage, we fall, I think, um, we fall captive of like a rah-rah, positive affirmation. Mm -hmm. But if we only rebuke, we become like uh, um, sensorial and evil-minded people. Okay. okay. So my feeling would be that if you talk about pastoring, absolutely, but people have got to realise it's got cost. Yes. It's not cheap. Yeah. And unless there's a sense of commitment to that possibility, then really it's nothing but a visit. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Yes. Thanks for the offering. Um, a couple of thoughts. I think that um, we have to be a little bit bolder than we sometimes are. I think a person who's a roughshod personality over people shouldn't be in an oversight role. Mm -hmm. The kick up, kiss down personality is kiss down, kick up. Yeah. Kiss up, kick down. Oh, kiss, kissing and kicking. I'm kissing and kicking. Oh, <laughs> kissing and kicking. Um, I think they are dangerous yeah. and should not be in roles. Otherwise, I think that um, acceptance alone is never enough. Mm -hmm. So if, in acceptance of that, like I'm saying, I accept you. Yes. I accept what you do. Mm -hmm. And if it's got no accountability attached to it, again, it's a weak thing. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, you mentioned later um, in one of your questions about pitfalls, one of the things that we've seen is that acceptance, as you cannot use it as a weapon for bad, to, to um, compensate for bad behavior. So if, if I come into your church and say, and I see very bad behavior, and then you appeal to friendship mm. and acceptance and love, then I'm hamstrung. Mm. Mm. We've seen this happen, where people have used a relationship as a weapon yes. against accountability. Right. So I think that we have to have a we have to have an ethic of accountability that's larger than friendship. Right. My readout of this is that friendships are toxic if they don't have a an accountability up to God. Right. Well, what I mean by that is that. If, if you and I are friends 
but but I am acting poorly mm. and you can't speak to me yes. or I reject what you speak to me, yes. then our friendship's valueless because I am not allowing myself to be accountable to a higher ethic. Yes. And I think one of the great dangers in the charismatic world is that we get so loosey-goosey mm. and so easy about things that we don't talk the hard issues. Right. We get people appealing to, I thought you were my friend. Yes. But honestly, if I'm living wrong, a, a, a person, and I say that to a person, then I have not allowed them to be a friend. Right. And friends have bruises. Yes. You know, they do. So oh, that's a discipleship issue though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So acceptance uh, and accountability, you, you've got to have the ethic, I think, of an accountability to God before you start tampering with the ethic of acceptability. Okay.